blockchain to Linux, the Linux distro that uh, requires you to compile everything yourself and to install Jing to the correct way takes a long time. Great wiki, lots of work and step by step. Now what if you regularly install Jing to for whatever reason or you want to cut down the time to install Jing to? So when I'm talking about installing Jing to here I'm talking about to the first minimal install. So basically just a minimal install of Gen2 and after that point is where you need to go and install your graphic interface and everything else on that. But just to get to that first port part where you can actually start up Gen2 can be quite challenging and quite time consuming. So I'm not going to say this is the right way and this is by far not the recommended way. Uh, the recommended way of course is to go and read it and do it step by step but let's say you're short on time or you you know how to do it and you just really really uh, need to get something up and running quickly at least from the base basics point of view well I actually came across a script on github that helps with this so let me show you so first what you're gonna need is a ISO image of Arch Linux. That's right. Uh, here I'm just going to, I don't think this, I'm just going to put it into Linux, Arch Linux. Give this at least four gigs of memory. Give this four CPU cores. Give this 50 gigs of hard drive space. And yeah, we're going to Gen 2. I know. But hear me out on this. So we start up from Arch Linux. Arch Linux Live is often a good uh, distro to use to get ready to install Gen2. Uh, even from the official guide a couple of folks have uh, recommended it. So let's uh, get to this point and the first thing I'm going to do is a pacman-sy because we need git and we need to download git onto the machine and it has installed it no but we I forgot to run pacman dash key dash init and let's just reinstall all this again here quickly. Install yes. And Git is now installed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to clone the Git repo from GitHub. So we just type in HTTPS github.com odd llama into the dash install commas and now it's cloned that repo so now we're going to change into the directory and the first thing we need to do is configure uh, okay it realizes that this package is missing so we're going to install missing packages at least what it needs to be able to show the dialogue okay so this is what we're going to do here. We're going to do a classic single disk uh, installation BIOS. Uh, we're going to use setup swap. We'll do a click swap partition. We'll do ext4 by default. I'm going to untick for encryption. I'm going to change the device. And on mine it should be dev VDA. Yeah, because I'm on a virtual machine. First name, we're just going to call it Gen2. Time zone. UTC. We can change this to US Pacific. Uh, locals. Locales. That's fine. It's already got the UTF-8. We want to configure networking. Perfect interface name. Perfect 
we don't need to give this a static IP at all. And interestingly enough, in theory, you can actually should be able to run this on a, a ARM or X64. But for now, we're going to keep this to AMD64. Enable bleeding edge, and could enable SSH. Uh, I'm not going to enable SSH for this. Because uh, idea is, of course, you have SSH, and then you go and uh, SSH into it after you've done your basic install, but from here we would do it all locally. Um, and let's look here, classic, BIOS, boot, swap, it'll use the whole rest of the storage. Yeah, now this should allow it to do what it needs to do automatically. I'm just going to use system D here. I'm going to say save as change of conf, exit. And I'll go install. Uh, yes, it's still missing program. Proceed with installation. Okay, automatically syncing the time. Of course, these programs that it's been installing is been on the system automatically. On Arch, okay, here. Uh, it's this is where we want to mount, so yes. File swap remaining. Do we really want to apply the configuration? We're going to say yes. Okay, and now it's automatically creating all the partitions. And what's nice about this is it automatically downloads and unpacks the stage three table, which if you look in the documentation is uh, one of the basic steps that it needs to create and unpack for the base system. And now it's gonna check the table integrity. Okay, a little mount the device. At least it says everything is okay so far. Okay, and what it's doing now. Pretty self-explanatory. Fetching all the additional files it needs. Syncing local tree. Getting the snapshot timestamp and here of course is calculating all the packages it needs to download and build and what it's going to start doing is downloading and emerging the basics in order to get it up and running on the machine again once this is done it will just be a basic install no GUI or anything else but uh, a good starting point to continue with the Gen2 installation. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this just continue in the background and pause and come back once it's moved a little bit uh, more further because this could take a little bit of time depending on the machine you've got it on. Okay, so we're coming on. Do we want to sign a with password now? Yes, we do. And let's add a really strong root password instead of the one that's been generated for us. Okay. According to this, it should be installed. So if we reboot, it should come up. I'm just going to remove the ISO image in the meantime. 
can just so that we can install it. Oh, do a proper reboot. Uh, so I'm just going to go here and I'm going to go to start to CD-ROM, apply. Also, just remember with this installed, it uses a general uh, kernel so that it will work on the most broad hardware instead of a uh, custom kernel. Okay, let's power this on and see what it does. And look at that, we have Chintu installed. Login as root, add our root password, and guess what? Chintu is actually installed. So this, of course, is the first part of getting a basic Gint installation up. Um, of course, it used the binary kernel distribution, so it didn't have to compile the kernel. Uh, you can, of course, afterwards, if you want, replace it with a custom kernel and enable SSH, everything else that uh, you want to do. Right now, this is the end of this video. Uh, we've gotten to where we need to here. I suggest go look online if you want to figure out how to continue with this or install a GUI. And I'll leave a link uh, to the script in the video below. As always, everyone, thanks for watching.